Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. My name is Christian and today is Monday, the best day of the week. <laughs> now, you may or may not know that uh, recently I was diagnosed with coronavirus and thankfully now I'm fully recovered. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about when and where and specifically how I got infected and so based on that I've been doing a little bit of research, a little bit of reading about the area that I'm interested in which is the area of language and it's possible that I contracted the coronavirus simply by speaking. Now, everything I'm going to tell you is based in empirical scientific evidence, but it may or may not apply to the coronavirus because there are so many things that we still don't know about the coronavirus. Um, but I, I want to start this story in Washington in America. Okay, so there was this story in the Los Angeles Times about a really small church in Washington that had a choir. If, if you don't know what a choir is, a choir is a group of singers who come together and normally they sing uh, religious, religious songs. And there were 60 people in this choir. They had one practice session together. They used alcohol gel. They used physical distancing. Uh, they apparently had no physical contact, but after their, after their rehearsal, after their singing rehearsal, dozens of them became sick with coronavirus and two of them died. And people were wondering, how is this possible? How did the virus spread so quickly and effectively among this group of people without having that close, intimate, personal contact. And one of the theories, and quite a believable theory, is that it spread through their singing. So, every time you produce sound, okay, you, you think that it's invisible. Um, and of course the sound waves are invisible, but when, when, you, when you talk or when you sing, you're also producing small droplets, okay, small particles of saliva, you know, and other, other materials from your, from your vocal tract, okay. Now, th the reason that uh, most people wear a mask, okay, is when they want to stop coughing and sneezing particles, okay? Now, these particles are about 50 micrometers in size, okay? So a sneeze particle or a cough particle, you can actually see it with your eyes, right? If you're, if you're in the sun, you can see a sneeze. It's like, oh my God, okay? Clearly, that is um, a very easy way to spread the, the virus, right? But when you're just talking normally, you are also producing particles, but they're much, much smaller. So a sneeze might have an average particle size of 50 uh, micrometers, whereas talking can produce particles of about one micrometer. Okay? But there is evidence that the influenza virus, for example, can spread with particles much smaller than, than one micrometer. And so it's probable that if influenza can spread in this way, then also the coronavirus can spread in this way. Not proven, but probable, right? <coughs> and this is where things get, get really interesting, okay? So the, the amount, okay, so the quantity of, of these little micro droplets that you produce depend on various factors, okay? But the number one factor they depend on is the volume at which you speak. So there's this great paper here that was published in Nature 
aerosol emission and super emission during human speech increase with voice loudness. And you can see really clearly in this graph that when the amplitude increases, the volume increases basically, the number of particles and the concentration of particles also increases in a linear, direct way with your volume. So the louder you speak, the more of these particles you're going to produce. Okay? And there's another paper um, which, is, uh, which was published in PLOS ONE, Effect of Voicing and Articulation Manner on Aerosol Particle Emission During Human Speech. And what they showed was that certain types of sounds produce more particles than others. So for example, you can see here that the vowel in heed, he, that e, that long e sound, produces a much greater number of particles than, for example, the sound in aw, the vowel in aw, hod. Okay? So, if you are speaking with a louder volume and you're producing certain types of sounds, then you can produce an enormous quantity of these particles, okay? And the, the research has shown that, that these particles can be more dangerous because they're smaller, they float in the air for longer, right? Because they're smaller, they're, they're called aerosols. It's basically like spraying an air freshener in your, in, in your, in your room, okay? So, it's possible that these church singers, these choir singers, all standing around, okay, together in a choir, singing very loudly, probably singing vowels like hee, ha, were generating enormous clouds of, of coronavirus. And again, I want to be clear that there's, there's no evidence, there's no clear evidence that coronavirus is airborne, but it's probable. It's possible, right? So, <clears throat> now, now, there's, the, the question we need to ask is, what, what are some risk factors, right? Like, what makes it more likely to be in a dangerous situation? And one thing we need to take into account is something called the Lombard effect. Okay, the Lombard effect means that you increase the volume at which you speak depending on ambient noise okay right it's common sense right if you're if you're in a disco if you're in a nightclub you speak louder okay to get over the music than if you're in a library for example but when we when the lombard effect takes place we don't just increase our volume we also change other things about the way we speak and you can do this experiment at home, right? You can put on some headphones and play some really loud music and try and have a conversation with, with another person, okay? And watch how the way that you speak changes with that, with that volume. And so the research again has shown that, for example, you increase your volume but you also increase the length of your vowels. Again, increasing the amount of droplets you produce. And you also put more emphasis on those function words. Ba, da, da, right? Look what you're doing. You're producing this, this kind of explosions of air, right? So the Lombard effect is especially known in choirs, right? Because imagine you're in a choir, there's 20 or 30 people all around you singing the same music quite loudly, you can't hear your own voice. So what do you do? You increase your volume so that you can hear what you're singing. You can hear if your note is correct, if your pitch is correct, etc. So given all of these factors, all of these factors put together, it means that singing in a group is a really bad idea right now, <laughs> okay? A really bad idea. And this, this brings me to the, to the next um, and, and final part of this, of this video, which is 
about normal conversation because obviously when when uh, we start to finish the lockdown and we go back we go back into you know normality how can we protect ourselves from from this from this this effect right so obviously it's important to wear a mask okay because because this um this this stops droplets from escaping okay a good mask <coughs> um but depending on the country in which you live the amount of distance okay between you when you're speaking can vary so there's this great piece of of research okay um preferred interpersonal distances a global comparison all of these researchers came together and they produced this chart of basically how close do people stand in different countries when they're talking and you can see that Argentina Argentina has no respect for personal distance <laughs> and on the other end of the spectrum Romania whoo, Romania is a long way away okay so now the, the distance as you can see the distance varies depending on whether it's a stranger or an acquaintance or a close person but there is variation by country and this shows that you know maybe what we consider social distancing <laughs> could could be perceived differently by different cultures right but if it is true if it is true that um that that the coronavirus can be spread through through simple conversation then it shows the importance of keeping that social distance it shows the importance of wearing a mask in conversation and it shows the importance of not singing in a loud environment um i thought it was a fascinating uh a fascinating journey down down into the rabbit hole of uh the study of speech and phonology um, and I hope that you find this information uh, interesting and useful and please remember that I am not an expert in um, virology or epidemiology these are just facts based on based on other previous research but please always uh, listen to the advice of the real experts um, this is just a bit of fun. Um, I'm going to see you again soon. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.